Everybody always tells me, you know, all my life they tell me, you have something special. I think I know what they mean. What they feel is that someday, somehow, some way, I'm supposed to do something that is supposed to affect everybody's lives in some way, dramatically. Smokey saved me during a time when I was non-productive and not even thinking about producing or not even giving producing myself a second thought, although I was writing. It was difficult for me to have a lot of confidence in my own pen. And um, Smokey saved me during a period that I needed some, some records. Smokey was a legend even in those days. We're good friends, and we respect each other a great deal. I felt very comfortable with Holland and Dozier uh, because they were very serious producers, and I could understand where they were coming from. And I tried very hard to interpret what they were feeling and thinking about when they wrote the song, as I feel even today I'm a good interpreter. It was very taxing on my voice because I was still finding my voice. And I was still finding how to control my voice and how to sing harsh, but yet not tear my throat out and uh, how to get up on some of the notes. And I never quite made it in some cases. Other cases I would, but I was still very experimental. It was very difficult to control my voice like they wanted me to because they cut the songs very high. They would always say that had they not cut them that high, that uh, they wouldn't have sold. I like Tammy, she was pretty. And she was nice, and she was soft, and warm, and sweet, and misunderstood. And I enjoyed working with her, and that couple with Ashford and Simpson made the project an enjoyable. Listen, baby, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough, baby. You know, I love Gladys very much. She's great. There's something that just sort of ticks her off about the whole heard it through the grapevine situation. There was something unethical involved. On that score, she has a beef. But the reality of the situation is that Norman cut it on me first and very candid because he didn't have a lot of faith in it. As a result of it being on the can, Norman knew he had a good song, so he cut it on Gladys and he put it out. So she came out with the version first. My song had been in the can for over a year. And then uh, after she put it out, then Motown released it on me, which to Gladys is a bit unethical because, you know, you don't want anybody from your own company covering your own, you know, a record. It's unethical in a sense, you know. There's something not good about it, but it's no fault of mine. I hope Gladys understands that. I didn't have any control over the situation at all. I got into quite a few arguments. I remember one. I wasn't ready to go down and sing, you know. I I should have been ready because the time was set and all and everything, and I should have gone, but I was 
doing something else that was of little consequence to what was really important. Barry came and, you know, he chewed me out pretty good about it, and I got mad. And Barry got mad, and we all had a vicious argument, and it was awful, and then we nearly had a fight. That was a very necessary thing because it catapulted me into my own individual individualness and it made me very independent of them and it caused me to become conscious of the fact that I had some ability to produce and that's when I started seriously thinking about producing myself. My brother was in the war at the time. I was incensed, so I wrote and I produced. But I wanted to write an album that could be translated into any language and it would still hold its meaning and not be particularly um, an ethnic statement, you know, that other nations or people couldn't get into and that sort of thing. Because I was much more incensed and I wanted to write stinging things and do music that would really make people say, wow, he's after us, and maybe incense them also. But something wouldn't let me do that. It was a very divine project, and God guided me all the way. Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. You see, war is not the answer. For only love can comprehend You know we've got to find a way To, to bring, bring some love and get the day, day. Oh, 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 oh. Pick it light and pick it size Don't punish me Sister. with brutality Sister. When it was released there, there was not the total confidence in it that most record companies have when they release a, a project on a, an artist uh, because it was slightly different. I think that uh, innovative and they felt like they were taking a chance but Barry having an idea that I had something. <laughs> Everybody always tells me, you know, all my life they tell me, you have something special. I think I know what they mean. What they feel is that someday, somehow, some way, I am supposed to do something that is supposed to affect everybody's lives in some way, dramatically. Now, I haven't done it yet, but I, I suppose I'll do it, God willing.